Hey guys, it's Rad. Before we get into the video, I want to go over why I like the Atlanta so much and also go over the build. So let's get into the equipment. Starting with main armaments mod one, damage control system mod one, aiming systems mod one, and propulsion mod one. Propulsion mod, I choose that for the island play, honestly. You are gonna be juking back and forth, kind of like tucking yourself into an island, backing up, going forward, using it to break line of sight. Also to get out of smoke screens faster. As far as the build, the build, I'm not 100% nailed down on this one, but like I'll go over this in a little bit. First we run last stand, then priority target, adrenaline rush and concealment. And then we pick up IFHE. After that, I'd say probably demo expert and heavy HE for more damage out of these smaller caliber shells and consumables enhancement for that extra 10% duration on your hydro and radar. At tier seven, you don't have that long of a duration, so anything kind of helps. One thing I might suggest is ditching the demo expert and the consumables enhancement for your survivability expert or even like superintendent to get a whole extra hydro and radar, which can help in late game. All right, and with that, we're gonna roll the footage. All right, so it was another night playing with my buddy Crying Stripper, or Bobby Boucher in game. Also, his friend Shenanigans. We're on the map Haven. North spawn. This flank. Standard battle. And I'm probably gonna skip ahead until we get into the action. Now the uh, the goal here with this map is using these ledges and islands to your advantage. You don't have a long range, so you have to make use of it by island hopping. And for what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get up on that island over here. I already see a smoke screen. And unfortunately, there's not a cap here. Normally, there's a cap in the middle of this gap to my right, and it'll bring in enemy destroyers, and that's a good place for you to park up. Use the islands, deny them the cap, help your destroyers get the cap. In this case, uh, my torpedoes have reloaded, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my hydro. This is a common gap for people to torpedo. We have the enemy Grom rushing up. Um, he did not know we were here. Unfortunately, from the last match, I had AP loaded and I forgot to swap it. My bad here. However, switching to HE, getting some salvos off. We deal with most of his HP in one hit. takes the rest and this third is a finish and for some reason that's fast enough to call it a devastating strike in the first blood so we're already off to a great start the other enemy destroyer sent torpedoes but it was too late we've got hydro up the gap is already monitored our destroyer is going out on the flank so we have strip going out in the blisk it's gonna be doing some spotting for us and in this case, there's our enemy destroyer that we were looking for. Other than that, this flank is pretty clean. There's a gap in the island here, so I'm going to go ahead and start sending some shots over at the enemy Byron. You want to use these shells, long travel times, and floaty nature to your advantage here. You can get some shots over some islands that the enemy can't return fire. In this case, I'm unspotted. I've got a good gap. The only thing that's going to spot me here is the uh, enemy CV. I already kind of know this. He's going to push us. I'm going to start going ahead and getting uh, going forward. Trying to, uh, trying to throw off his attack, but I don't know if we're going to actually make it. He makes the drop. We're already turned. We're taking planes. And he misses, unfortunately, for him. This whole time we're throwing shells over the island that they can't really return fire. And just like that, we've kind of denied them this flank. They're already turned out, turning away. Their destroyers turned away. I start thinking about going into the middle channel, but with on the mini map, you can see the enemy battleships are starting to come this way. So it would pretty much be suicide. And 
I at least think twice about it. I'm warned by my friends not to do it. And so we turn back. And you see just how floaty these shells are. I'm able to arc over that island and still hit them. I just unfortunately don't have the range. Now what I'm doing there is I'm using the uh, I'm using the map key. I'm doing a quick bump on and off of the map key, and it's giving me a little little elevation change that I can see over the island. This helps me guide like where I want to land my shells. Let's me know that that rook has already turned out, and I'm not going to be able to hit him. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept it. Start repositioning over here. Enemy Hatsuharu takes out our New Mexico on the other flank, but luckily we, you know, our team's able to wipe him out as well. So it's not the greatest trade, but we get a destroyer out. They get a they get a battleship for it. All right. Like I said earlier, all I'm doing at this point is I'm trying to play these islands. Islands are your best friend in the Atlanta. So the plan is come out around this island and tuck into the next island, just moving up. My next target's the New Orleans to my right, or the destroyer if he spots me first. Which probably isn't the smartest decision considering the rook in front of me. Weird bug, I get stuck on something underwater right there. And I'm I'm bothered by that. <laughs> And the New Orleans is very low. We're going to go ahead and open up on him as we're turning out. So we've already got the turn started, just in case the Rook is paying attention. He goes down, and just like that, yep, we are the next target for the Rook. On the other side, though, we have the Colorado pushing up as well. So we have target-rich environment for fires here. The other downside of this is that's 11 and a half, 11 and a half second lead time. That's going to be a hard shot to hit. It's a small downside for the Atlanta. You get a good rate of fire, but you have very slow shell velocity. You're able to arc over islands, but at the same time, you're having to arc every shot. So open water shots like this, you are going to struggle a little bit to land shots. Enemy New Mexico does take a shot. We are lucky to dodge it. And I should be turning out here. Colorado, New Mexico, New Mexico, and a Rook all in the same spot. Luckily for us, we're division with a Destroyer, so we're going to take advantage of it. Colorado's already burning. He has burned his repair just now, so within 20 seconds or so, we should be able to start some permanent fires on him. He lives that long. I'm focusing him out because of his position and the caliber of guns. That's not something I want to face later on. Mexico's we can kind of farm him down. We're going to be able to take advantage of the smoke screen a little bit longer in the next 58 seconds. At this point, we're just spreading the word here. Trying to get fires on as many as we can. New Mexico gets some blind fire on us and smoke. Decent shot. Not enough to do anything. Tactical adrenaline rush. Nelson spots torpedoes on their way into the smoke, and we're able to go ahead and start going forward. But they run out, so nothing to worry about. Destroyer pops up. I did not see him right there until here we are. Wandered into radar range. At this point, the smoke's about to dissipate. We are in trouble. We are in front of three battleships. Enemy carriers over in the area, too. One's already aiming us. We get a fire on the New Mexico at the front. We start adjusting our aim to get the midsection fires. 
next fires up and now we notice he does not have fire permission so we're gonna go ahead and adjust our aim see if we can't get that forward superstructure fire and there we are triple fire rook burns down other new mexico behind takes a shot this is pretty far we're just gonna go ahead and get the guns out of the game here and focus this new mexico in front of us now that he's dead we're switching targets. We destroyed an enemy battleship. Using that right click to free look over here and see if I need to worry about these torpedoes. Enemy New Mexico does take a shot. We turn in. Dodge the shot. Now we got him dialed in. Like I said, it takes a little bit. No fire prevention on this New Mexico either, so we aim a little bit further forward. Big chunk, he gets a penetration right through the nose. Our carrier is gonna help in the situation, which it's appreciated at this point, like, the Atlanta doesn't take a little, it doesn't tank damage very well at all. We have a very low health pool at 27.5, like I said. We do get the New Mexico out, that puts us up to four kills. We lay some preemptive torps out for the Sims. He's kind of locked down in this island. Begging nicely for the Kraken, unfortunately. Come on. Coming into view. Leave him on one HP in a dream. And there's our Kraken unleashed. We've sunk an enemy destroyer. Which leaves only the carrier. It was a pretty quick game. Or at least it feels fast paced. That's what I like about the Atlanta. Once you get into the action, it's just fire, 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 and it's a fun time. Ship's a party. Looking at our Bliskovitsa, who has a permanent fire on, and uh, getting a little concerned over how low he is. Fire goes out and he's still alive. No cap kill all. We're going for CV scalps at the end. Not a bad game overall. CV sends planes, pops up. We're not in range, unfortunately. The Atlanta short, short range. It's gonna be an issue at times. Finally, we're able to start laying down some fire, but still 13 and a half second lead time. He's on the border. It's gonna take a while to get these shells in there. Teammates are also taking fire. He drops our bullets, Vitsa goes down and now we have to avenge him I hate to see fellow clanmates and the enemy team but necessary evil at the end of the day we gotta get him out All right, if y'all made it this far in the video, I appreciate it so much. Please consider liking, subscribing if you haven't already. Have a rad day.